In one of my videos, I was using a line similar to this in my sample code, and there was a question about the question mark. So I'm going to make this video about what the question mark does, and that's the question. Um, this video is going to be about null conditional operators in C-sharp. Let's dig in and learn about what it does. So let's talk a little about the null conditional operator. So basically, whenever you have the question mark dot, and you can also do question mark and then the, you know, the hooked hooks, if that makes sense, um, to, you know, make an index for the collection, though, this is the um, docs page for all of it. This is actually the docs page for member access operation, uh, operators and expressions. So this lists all the things it even explains like, you know, whenever you want to do member access expression, which is just, you know, whenever you press the dot to um, access a member on an object. Uh, but the thing that we are especially interested in is here the null conditional operator. So this is available from C sharp six, which has been out for a while at the time of recording, we are at C sharp nine, I think C sharp 10, they're making plans for that. So um, it's been in here for a while. And they explain it like if a evaluates to null, then the result of a question mark dot x or a question mark indexer x is also null. If it doesn't index to null, then it will just return the object. So you know, and they have some sample here. Uh, but of course, I wouldn't be making this video if I wasn't going to show you how to actually do this. So let's switch over to um, uh, a new tab which is try.net. So try dot 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 net. That seems like a clear URL, right? But this is really, really cool. Um, because you can see here, there's already like a little text box that um, holds some C sharp code. And I think this is running on blazer. And um, so there's some sample code in here. This is just if you create a um, file new console application, this is basically what you get. So this is the entry point for any application in um, .NET and um, C sharp. So here you have the the, the main method, um, this gets triggered whenever the application starts. And here it does for each uh, for 20 something, um, it will do print the Fibonacci sequence, right? So whenever I run this, you will see the output here at the bottom, and this will be the Fibonacci sequence. So that is cool, but that's not what we need. Um, but this is what try.net does. Uh, uh, like I said, I think it runs on Blazor, so That's cool. It runs probably on the client. Um, and you can just execute all kinds of C sharp things. So I really like to use this tool to, you know, try some things out in, in C sharp. Um, but let's remove this little Fibonacci method right here. Um, so we are just, you know, this does nothing. This just executes main, but it does nothing. So, but let's create a little public class person. Uh, there we go, person. You can see the IntelliSense is working too, which is cool. Um, and I'm going to give this a public string name, of course, which is, you know, a property, get set, there we go, or a public uh, person, let's let's nest it a little bit person, which is going to be the partner, um, get set. So this is just, you know, an object that you would typically implement for something. And a public string array. Um, um, hobbies, let's make hobbies, get set, there we go. So let's take this step by step, right? Um, so let's go use the name first. So I go in here to the main, and I say var, uh, let me let's actually do this explicitly. Uh, person person is let's make it null to make it interesting right away. So here we go person. And we're going to say console dot right line um, is person dot name. There we go. So whenever we run this, then take take two seconds, what's going to happen? It's going to crash, right? Because this is null. So whenever you call um, um, person dot something, then it will crash and it will give us a um, no reference exception because you know, we're trying to reference something on an object that doesn't exist, which has null. And that is kind of the problem that we have here, right? So um, typically, what you would then uh, go out and do is check if person uh, not is not is null typing is hard. null. Um, then we're going to do this, right? So whenever it's not null, then we're going to to actually do this. And you run it and then nothing happens because it's null. So it skips over that. And we do that. But whenever we do this, then new person 
and we can do it like this um, name is Gerald there we go and whenever we run it now Gerald will show up so that's fine um, and also without the check it shows up right because but now you have added one two three lines of extra code um, that you know it's important but it's not necessarily um, something you want because you know you have to say to do the same thing for partner maybe for hobbies so that's not great right um, so what we can do with this uh, conditional operators is uh, it's the question mark and we can check if something is null so we can just do it in line basically so if we remove this if statement right here then we can now say person question mark so I always like to think of it like hey is person null are we're asking the system if person is null um, so please give me person um, dot name and um, whenever we do this it will work so nothing changed it works uh, but whenever I change this back to be null it will still work um, it won't give us any output of course but it will still work so what this does is it says like hey if person is null then um, I'm just going to skip over that and I'm going to um, um, actually it, it, it short circuits so um, it will it will just stop evaluating here but it will not break right it will just um, um, make this null and apparently console write line checks for null and then um, it will just output nothing um, so to make this even more clear I guess we could do if string dot is null or white space so this is a method that checks a string if it's null or it just contains white spaces and if I say here person dot name and I'm then going to console dot write line um, and say a person has no name which is you know an obscure um, Game of Thrones reference and whenever I run this it's going to crash that's what we expected, right? Um, because we don't have that null check in here. So what's going to do now, it's going to see um, like, hey, I want to get this person um, dot name. And then it says, whoa, but I don't have a person. So I'm going to crash. So again, let's just fix this by adding a question mark in here. Um, and now we're going to say run. And it says a person has no name because it will now come up with null. So we can make this even more clear by saying console dot right line. Um, and let's check if person dot name is null, right? And that should evaluate to true. There we go. So this comes up with true. So basically, each step you can also nest them. So if we say person dot partner, um, oh, and then we have to chain, of course, the question marks too. So now it's going to see, hey, is person null? If this is null, then um, it's going to um, stop evaluating here, and then the rest will be null too. Uh, but if person is an actual thing, but partner is null, then it will stop here. But if partner is also not null, it will actually evaluate the name. Um, so let's just remove, well, let's keep this in here. Let's keep these things the same dot um, partner. Um, so it basically just, you know, um, um, goes along with this. It still is nothing, but you can chain them like this. So that is cool, right? And if I remove this one here, then it will crash again. Um, well, it should crash again. Oh, that's interesting. So you don't actually have to do this. That's cool. Oh, interesting. Well, now I learned something. Um, so, but I, I would opt for just being sure, um, adding these here. And now whenever we say var, oh, not var, um, is new person. And I can say uh, name is uh, Gerald again, so that works, but we need, so we don't, we won't do a partner, so that's run, and now my, my name is coming back, right, because it still skips over here, and it gives me the name, but it still, um, you know, just does evaluate the, the partner and stuff like this, and if we say partner um, is new uh, person, again, um, then give that a name is also Gerald because you know I'm, I'm just my own partner <laughs> um, and then whenever I run this it does not contain a definition for partner that's right partner there we go and if we run it again you can see it skips over this because you know now it's not null or white space it actually has something um, so let's copy and paste this one and we can say person dot um, partner dot name um, let's add the question mark and now we have also Gerald see so that works now for the last bit uh, for hobbies you can do kind of the same thing so let's add um, some hobbies in here um, so let's do a little comma and say the hobbies there we go hobbies is new 
Um, there we go. And let's make this uh, being a YouTuber. There we go. And uh, gardening, because I love some gardening. And of course, um, programming. There we go. So now I've got a couple of hobbies. And whenever we um, do a console write line, I can do string dot join and say, uh, put a comma between it and make it person dot hobbies. There we go. So whenever I run this, uh, we have a syntax error because I forgot the comma here. Run, and now I'm getting all of these. So um, that is the hobbies, but let's change this actually to um, be just one hobby. Um, best, oops, best hobby. There we go. Plus person dot hobbies. Um, so let's take the first one. Run, and I'm getting the first one, right? So best hobby is being a YouTuber. Yes. Um, subscribe to the channel of this YouTuber if you haven't done so already. Um, so, you know, this works, but whenever I change this to be um, also null, there we go, null, then it's going to be null, right? Because that is kind of like, um, um, it's it probably evaluates to string.empty because of this, I'm not actually sure. Um, but let's, you know, remove this whole thing. And then it's going to say again, like system null reference, right? Um, so what you can do then is whenever you're not sure when the disk is going to happen, you can also add a question mark in between here. And you can say hobbies, maybe um, zero, or it can be one or it can be 100. It will just check first if hobbies is null, yes or no, and then it will evaluate the index, yes or no. Um, so but also you can change this again, right? So if this is actually um, a, a complex thing, um, then you can also go back here, it's not going to be the best syntax, but you can um, also do the question mark here and do a dot um, with after that, right? So you can chain it again. And whenever something is null or not null, it will just um, follow through with all the rest. I hope this was a little bit clear. This is how to work with null conditional operators in C sharp. I hope you now understand how the null conditional operators work in C sharp and .NET. Um, so go out and simplify your code because this should be able to save you, you know, like a couple of if statements, check if person is null, then check if person dot partner is null, and then go from there. Um, you can remove all of those and just put the question marks in there, uh, which is of course really, really cool. Of course, beware as always, because you know, these are nice little um, syntax, syntactic sugar, because it makes the syntax a little bit different, a little bit nicer. Um, but you know, uh, be careful that your code still is readable, because um, it, it might not be so clear to other users who are reading it after you. If you've liked this video, please click that like button on the down here. Um, and if you've subscribed, not subscribed to my channel yet, please subscribe to my channel. If you've liked this video and maybe there's there's lots more, so go check it out before, you know, I can convince you to actually subscribe it, but please do. And for the rest, I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.